tell them, I say, hey, if you're going to put that out there, the that's what the universe is going to give you. And if, if you have a record and it's just out recycling that message, mm-hmm. big boot, big boot, big boot, big boot. You know, the, the universe is receiving it like, all right, so this voice, mm-hmm. this individual, this soul needs big booty. So let's surround that individual with big booties. <laughs> but you're not asking for big booties who are conscious. You're just asking for whoever has a big butt. And whoever I, mean, I, gotta, I gotta put more big booties in my song. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary and all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. Yeah, what, what in your opinion would be a way to level up spiritually? Because I think it's, again, an easy thing to say or think about, but you know, it involves such a full body, mind, like soul connection to whatever it is spiritually, like for your own journey. Um, and I think a lot of people out there, even just the word spirituality is just this kind of vague mystery. Um, I guess what's, what in your sort of experience has been a way to, yeah, level that up or at least practices around it. Um, one of the ways is if something makes you feel any type of way, like fearful, especially, uh, find out why. Mm-hmm. Like literally, just if something makes you afraid, if you're afraid of spiders, figure it out. You mm-hmm. know? Like, l- like literally, start to research the things that you're afraid of. Right? Yeah. You know, if you're afraid of death, that doesn't mean try to die, but that does mean look it up you know get a book get curious about whatever you're afraid of if you're afraid of roaches do some research you know Mm -hmm. like maybe roaches are a specific symbol Mm -hmm. you know like one time last year i was walking or i was trying to drive to a location and there were three cops that were just randomly parked normally that doesn't happen you know I, i go to this location all the time Mm-hmm. I'm a dog and we just walk and do our thing. But there were three cops and I just drove right by him. I didn't even pay him any mind. It was like, like, do I need to react all of a sudden because there's cops that are huddled up? It was like, no, just keep doing what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was on the phone with uh, one of my friends and then while I was walking my dog, and this is kind of like 7 p.m., kind of the evening, mm-hmm. I just kind of hear this this ruffling in the bush and uh there's a snake and it's kind of like it, <clears throat> it it's like a big snake it's not something that i i'd ever see just mm-hmm. in in real but it's a whole other thing when you just see a big like three three plus foot long just snake just yeah. straight up on the ground he ain't it's not worried about nothing, you know, it's just living its life, and it, it hears me clearly, or it feels the vibration of my feet in love, love, uh, my dog, but uh, it was getting ready to go into the hole, like there's a little prairie dog hole, you yeah. know, I was, like, I've always wanted to catch snakes anyway, so I'm not really afraid, the thing that I'm looking at is, well, does it have a rattle, which it did not, Mm-hmm. So I could use discernment because mm-hmm. I got curious at a very young age about different types of animals, reptiles, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, all right, using my discernment, I'm not scared of this particular snake because there's not a whole lot of venomous snakes in Colorado to begin with. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, now I have a choice because it already has its head in the hole. It's trying to get in there. Do I grab it or oh do I let it go? And then do I wonder what could have been? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, fuck this. I'm grabbing it. <laughs> I grab a snake. And it's just like, I just pick it up. And I'm, I'm like, sounded like I'm Steve Irwin or something. Just, Yo, this is snake. <laughs> this is a thrilling experience. But I, I just feel like if we would take more time to just embrace things that we fear we can find so much excitement from it mm-hmm. and i think that's where it starts like figure out why 
why you're afraid of something that you're afraid of. Is, yeah. Uh, see if see if you can change that feeling. Yeah, it's crazy. I actually have a um, not really a similar thing, but that kind of feeling you're talking about. So I used to be terribly scared of um, spiders. And I was actually doing this thing where I was by myself. Um, uh, I was in Peru in this little hut thing. And um, I was sleeping there. So it was kind of in the, um, in the Amazon. And there's this spider in my little cabin thing. And we don't have any technology, no electricity. I'm just sitting there with my candlelight. And I'm, I'm like journaling. And you can see in my journal, as I'm writing, I like my thought just pauses. And then I go into this offset thing about the spider. Because at first I'm like, <gasps> but then I'm sort of sitting there and I see what it's doing is it's wrapping up the little insect and um, sort of <laughs> doing its own thing. But it's like right there, like it's an arm's reach away. Um, and I started to be like, wait a sec. Like, what am I actually like? What's my relationship with the spider right now? Like we're both in this jungle. The insects themselves are actually theoretically dangerous in some kind of way like i don't know exactly what they are but i know we're in this very fruitful filled thing with a lot of insects i don't know what they are and this spider is essentially in my space but it hasn't bothered me and it's actually killing another insect which probably was a mosquito of sorts or something that would have been bothering me so all of a sudden i had this like shift of wait a sec like the spider's on my team like it's <laughs> we're both in here in this little hut the spider's like protecting me with its web. Um, and so you can see my thought process going in the journal. And then there's a kind of a funny thing. A couple of days later, uh, same thing. I kind of come into my spot and I get a little mosquito kill. And I go back to this thing and the spider's got another insect that's wrapping up. And I had this like little high five moment where I'm like, hey, we both got one. Like, yeah, like we're both just <laughs> up there winning. Um, and I go into this thing like, I just got to trust that the spider won't come into my bed, like into my personal space, but it can be in my team space and um, all this stuff. But it was a weird, yeah, just sort of coming to terms with spiders. Um, it's still a little bit of a battle, but it's also one of those things where a little perspective and you kind of realize they're on our team and if they're hurting you, it's probably because some sort of mistake. Um, so yeah, it's just sort of a, <laughs> I'm now one level up closer to being ultimate friends with the, with the spider species. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that because it, one thing that you mentioned was like, what's my relationship to the spider? And mm -hmm. I think that's, once again, that's another way to become more spiritual. It's like, mm -hmm. what's my relationship to the words of the Bible? What's my relationship to the stories of the Bible? What's mm -hmm. my relationship to somebody of another complexion what's mm -hmm. my relationship to the space that i'm occupying or mm -hmm. the job that i have mm -hmm. and like constantly asking that and asking it in a way that's just from the heart mm -hmm. then we can start to we can start to understand and bring awareness to why we're doing it and yeah, yeah. it's a lot of quiet time <clears throat> it takes a lot of journaling you know a lot of people who journal are able to get to those very sacred and spiritual places because we are trying to figure out what life is what is our relationship to life itself mm -hmm. and if there is that intentionality then we eventually get some answers not all the answers but mm -hmm. we, we get more answers the more curious that we are mm -hmm. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. No, I, I've I mean, it's an ongoing, ongoing battle, but um, not even battles. I think it kind of is a battle. I think it is something that's really tough to, to grip and, and fight with is like creating time and moments to have, creating space to have space is like a hard thing because there's also so many things life throws at you. And um, I think that's one of the hard parts with even going back to the like political problems in our world or corruption or all these different things is you get so caught up in almost what you feel you have to do or are told to do or numbers you got to hit or all these things um and then you your brain gets rewired and you get so lost in 
what are you even doing it for? Um, and so that's just like, as a powerful politician or a business leader or someone who maybe has a lot of influence, like stepping back into that intentionality, like what is your relationship with that power? Because um, we all also, even on a small level, like have power in so many different ways. Um, yeah, I think that's something I'm constantly questioning about myself. It's like, what is it that I know I'm capable of and how can I approach that in a way that breathes more light in a, and you were using the word vibration earlier, but I love that word because I feel like vibration is something that it's like a it's it's like a legitimate scientific frequency that is passing through but it's never seen to any of us, but we all feel it so intense, like intensely. Um, and so music's obviously a direct vibration, but there's vibrations by the way we stand, by the way we speak, the way we smile, like they're all, um, I don't know, like we all have power in our vibration. What is the way we approach it intentionally? I think that's kind of like spirituality to me even. One thing that I would like to do is introduce you to one of my mentors. <clears throat> uh, his name is Corbin. And for a number of years, he was a pastor. And he shares some of your some of your story in terms of, you know, he comes from you know, a, a background of privileges. And I'll, I'll say privileges in a a very intentional way because we all come from backgrounds of privileges. It's mm -hmm. just do you have the awareness of what are, mm -hmm. you know. So when yeah. I think about like how he has navigated uh, like his experiences, he literally left, you know, being uh, a pastor to pursue work mm -hmm. that he felt called to be a part of. Mm -hmm. I'm humbled every time I'm around him because he is not afraid of taking the path that makes his heart full mm -hmm. and that is very bold that is very powerful it's not about the money it's like mm -hmm. he has infinite connections you know he could do so many things but he is just this great model of a person who uh, like when i got i was still in college technically when i started working with him for the first time mm -hmm. and he has this thing called peace warriors mm -hmm basically it's a summer camp and they would teach young people from all different backgrounds uh the the value of mental health but they would do it in very unique ways a playful way so they'd analyze mm -hmm. something like star wars right mm -hmm. and uh, they would talk about well, you got to use the force you know to, to cultivate good energy and when mm -hmm. the kids have conflict they would sit down with the kids and like, all right, now let's talk about what happened. We'd all congregate in a circle outside mm -hmm. and in the middle of the circle was a peace tree and mm -hmm. we would all practice Tai Chi together mm -hmm. you know, with the peace tree. And I think about, you know, how that has helped shape kind of where I am spiritually. I've always been somewhat, you know, spiritual. It's mm -hmm. just... You, you have to constantly find people who are in alignment with your value system. Yeah. And as, your, as your values evolve, so will your relationships and so will the people who uh, who aid the journey. Mm -hmm. you know? It becomes just an endless amount of opportunities based off of what you're in alignment with or in mm -hmm. alignment with. Mm -hmm. if, if people want chaos, if people want, you know, like big booties and, you know, like go to a strip club. <laughs> you're gonna yeah, get some big booties. <laughs> you're gonna get some big booties and, and butt cheeks. You know, like that's what you gonna get. But <laughs> talk to my students about this. Like, I tell them, I say, hey, if you're gonna put that out there, then that's what the universe is gonna give you. And if if you have a record and it's just out recycling that message, mm. big booty, big booty. Big booty, big booty. You know, the, the universe is receiving it like, all right, so this voice, mm -hmm. this individual, this soul needs big booty. So let's surround that individual with big booties. <laughs> but you're not asking for big booties who are conscious. 
You're just asking for whoever has a big butt and whoever. I, mean, has I, gotta, a... I gotta put more big booties in my song. <laughs> <laughs> whoever has a big butt might not be what's for you. Yeah. <laughs> they might have bigger baggage, so. Yeah. <laughs> just constantly think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Um, that's awesome. Well, that's, yeah, we're actually uh, hitting the hour here, but I think that's a good way to <laughs> to wrap it up. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for talking on um, all this stuff. I always think it's super fun to like just shoot the shit on all these different um, ideas and everything. Um, yeah, any other sort of stuff on your mind or, or whatnot? Or? I mean, I'm, I'm sitting across from the room where I saw you for the first time, so... Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's an honor to to just get to know you in a different way, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, for you to be twenty three, mm-hmm. it's it's a joy for me to just be around you because it's like it's refreshing. Like I'm mm-hmm. around people all day who are just like they're they're surviving the systems that are at work. You know, mm-hmm. the systems have you know, defeated the morality of some folks. Mm -hmm. So for me to interact with you is kind of like a breath of fresh air because you're excited, you're curious, you're, you're like, you're not waiting for something to happen for you. You know, Mm -hmm. you're like, all right, let's get it. Let's, (laughs) I don't need money. Like let's, let's volunteer. That's how I was when I was with Corbin. Like I volunteered (laughs) with Corbin for like a week, but here's the thing. I was doing it for a week, for a full week. Like every single day, eight AM to basically three AM, I was like, "Corey, but I need to get paid." Now. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah well, like, hey, that's quite. Like, we were dealing with like forty to fifty kids, so it's yeah. it's a different context. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Um, I had that same energy that you have. And, uh, it's not that I don't have it anymore, but it's like as you as your responsibilities, uh, they just develop. It's kind of like your energy becomes more precious because you're thinking, all right, like I need a, you ha- you almost have to have an energy budget as Michelle mm-hmm. uh, Rocket would say, like, all right, what's my energy budget for family? What's my energy budget for my mm-hmm. spiritual practice, mm-hmm. my martial arts practice, my music practice, my mentorship practice? Mm-hmm. And that's not even including your job. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's like, how do we budget energy mm. to get the most fulfilling life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. That's an awesome way to put it. I'm going to be thinking about that. I'm going to budget my energy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs>